thanks for stopping by the channel. As you know, if you've been following my channel, there's four E's on my logo, and one of them is about education. And uh, I wanted to just share a little education that I got uh, regarding welding, TIG welding, these aluminum parts. There was a little uh, snippet there. Uh, let, let's show it again. There's the video of these parts that I was making. They were damaged. They go to a dock and uh, they were getting rubbed on, as you can see, and chewed them up. So we opted to do a little surgical amputation, cut the piece off, make the new pieces and the new brackets. Offered to my friend, hey, more than happy to weld them. Well, I've never welded, TIG welded, quarter inch aluminum. And uh, he was here that first day, and we set up and tried to uh, weld it, and it wasn't working. And it uh, wasn't working, and uh, he says, hey, I got somebody that can weld them. I says, fine, just go ahead. I, I can't do it. Well, time passed, and he never got it done. So I said, give them back to me. I'll do it. And uh, so I set off to uh, go ahead and weld them. I set my uh, unit up on AC. I have a uh, Miller Synchrowave Wave 250. I set it up to what I thought on AC and, and I was getting nowhere. The uh, tungsten was turning blue. Uh, so I did a quick search. Why is the tungsten turning blue? Well, uh, it turns out you shouldn't be using thoriated tungstens on aluminum. You should use 100% uh, tungsten. Well, so figured that out, went at it again, was getting nowhere. So I said, oh boy, time to... Uh, do a YouTube search. And I got to tell you, YouTube's always got it. I found a fella at a uh, Miller 250, and he described my condition right on the number. He says, yeah, you're probably a home shop guy. He goes, uh, Millermatic Synchrowave 250. He says, uh, you're probably feeding it with a 50 amp circuit. He says, uh, to run these quarter inch aluminum, you're going to have to push that dial up uh, about 150 amps, 175 would really be good. He says uh, that 50 amp circuit's not going to take it, and it did not. Never got to that, actually. Uh, went on in his video, and he said, here's the trick. And he went over all the settings on the, uh, on the uh, sinker wave. Uh, the uh, timer and all the different uh, all the different settings, which was really helpful. And uh, he said, "Hey, here's the uh, secret: get your map gas torch out, heat the part, get it really, really hot, and that way you're not sucking so much amperage, and you can cheat." And I, I basically cheated. Um, you can see the welds there. There, I, I wish I had the amperage. I could have just done a beautiful job. I know it, but I kept popping the, uh, I kept popping the uh, circuit breaker. So I had to go as fast as I could get some get some penetration, and uh, I think we're good. It's for what for what it's going to be used at. They're non-visual. I think it'll be strong enough. I did uh, I did do a test weld initially. And uh, I got good penetration. Basically, the weld snapped in half. I only I had only welded on one side, so it just snapped the bead right in half. But anyway, I just wanted to share uh, that education that I got. Um, it uh, it's very helpful to have YouTube out there to step in and uh, educate. So wanted to share that, and hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, good luck with your TIG welding. Um, I'm actually going to look at uh, bootlegging. I don't know if bootlegging is the right term. Uh, I have the ability to probably add 100 amps off of my main service and then use a temp power cord for the few times that I'll ever do this. So I'm just kind of doing a reconnaissance with my electrician and talking about it. Whether I really chase that or not, I don't know. I don't know much about inverter machines, but... I think an inverter machine could weld this and not have the circuit breaker problem. Uh, but I really like my synchro wave. So 
I'm going to stick with it. Again, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you soon on another one. Best, uh, best of luck and take care.